everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to the Dice Towers to talk about my favorite games from my favorite designers. And today we're talking about Michael Kiesling. Now, if you had asked me 20 years ago um, about Michael Kiesling, I would have said, oh yeah, he's that guy who works with Wolfgang Kramer. And at some point, I will do my 10 favorite games from Wolfgang Kramer, and the overlap between that list and this list will be high, because many of the games on this list were co-designed with Wolfgang Kramer. But in recent years, Michael Kiesling has really struck out on his own in many games and has really made a name for himself. He still designs a lot of great games with uh, Wolfgang Kramer, but he has done some games on his own. So I'll try to point it out as I go through this list. But these are my 10 favorite games that he has designed. Number 10 is actually one he co-designed with Andreas Schmidt, and that's Heaven and Ale. Now, I find the theme of Heaven and Ale to be a little snore-inducing, monks producing beer and things like that. The theme is barely there, but it has the ratchet mechanism, which I love, which is going as far as you want around this board, but then you can't go backwards. That's pretty neat. And then the idea of taking the different resources and building them there, it's a solid game. It does not get a ton of love, but I think it works really well. Actually, I shouldn't say it doesn't get a ton of love. It gets a decent amount of, of people into it. It doesn't look exciting, but you should try it out anyway. Number nine is one he did with Wolfgang Kramer called Savannah Park. This one's pretty new, and it is a bingo-esque game in which you are have these tiles with animals on them. Someone's going to call out a tile, uh, the, the, the one with a giraffe and an elephant on it. Everyone then puts that tile on their board, and you're trying to put them together in groups to form you know, as big of a group of elephants as you can, as big of a group of giraffes and things like that, but they also need to be connected to watering holes. Very simple, but it's a lot of fun. Number eight, he did by himself. I just recently played this one, Sans Souci, I believe is how you pronounce it. If not, well, you can see the cover here. This is a really simple game in which you are pulling tiles from a board uh, that's going to have a bunch of different tiles of different hedges on them, and then you're placing them in front of you, trying to make paths down, because the farther down you place the tile, the more points you get. This one is really intriguing to me because it's such a simple game, the theme's kind of barely there. I mean, Kiesling is not necessarily, we're not going to see many games on this list that have a strong theme. Most of them are fairly abstracted. But it's still, this game just really, I, I found it to be very enjoyable. Number seven is Riverboat. Riverboat, um, again, not much of a theme here, but there is a riverboat moving around as you collect things. But this is one of those games that, just for me, I say satisfaction. Everything I do in this game, I get something, I get satisfaction. I complete this over here, I get satisfaction. I finish this row over here, I get satisfaction. And this game does a really good job at that riverboat. Number six is Cusco, which is the redone version of Java. This is from a quote-unquote mask trilogy that he and uh, Wolfgang Kramer worked on together. But Cusco is a game that just has so many options. You are placing out different tiles, and then you score at the end of your turn, which is an interesting way to do it because everybody can score for themselves in the best way possible. Yes, that means there can be a decent amount of uh, analysis paralysis in this game for sure, but I really enjoy this game. Number five is also from the Mass Trilogy, and this is Mexica. Uh, Mexica is a game, it's an area control game, but you are creating the areas. You're building these canals, and you know, you might be a big area, but then you better control. It's going to be harder for you to fight over, or you make a small area, but then you get fewer points, but it's easier to control. Very vicious back and forth in your face type game, and the newest version of it and Cusco are just so beautifully produced from Super Meeple. Number four is the game that said Michael Kiesling is his own person, and that's Azul. For me, I'm going to put my favorite of the Azul. I'll put the, this is the Azul series, although I actually don't like the, the newest one. But the first three I liked a lot, and my favorite is Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Azul, the concept of taking a bunch of tiles of the same color and then putting them on a board and you don't want to take too many sometimes, and sometimes you don't take enough. Very interactive game, and this game has sold like mad. The original Azul is still a very popular game. The Stained Glass of Sintra, I like this one the best because of both theme, and it's also, I think, the most vicious of them, very in your face with the other players, and I found it to be a lot of fun. Number three, and the last three here are all collaborations with Wolfgang Kramer. Number three is one of the newer collaborations he's done, which is Paris. In Paris, 
just so many interesting things in Paris um, as you are building up different areas of Paris and playing cards to put out buildings and things. I, that part is interesting, but what's really interesting is you get lots of bonuses in this game, and there's a bonus track, which again is that ratchet idea. You can move down and take these amazing bonuses at the end, but then you skip all the bonuses in between. I just find that to be so much fun, and it just looks fantastic too. Paris. Number two is a game that I heard is about to be reprinted, which I'm excited about, and that is Pueblo. This is another combination between um, him and Wolfgang Kramer, and this one is straight abstract game. You have these three-dimensional pieces. You're placing them down, and you're trying to cover your color up because there's this little chief walking around the outside of the board, and he'll look down a row, and if he sees your color, you get points. <gasps> you don't want points in this game. And if he's on the corner, he looks from above. Just a simple, neat game that really does a lot of spatial thinking, and I think it's just a lot of fun. And my number one, really one of my favorite games, is Adventure Land. Um, so, Keesley and Cromer, this game to me is just so entertaining because it's a grid, and I love grids. And each turn you draw a couple cards, and they get put out in that grid. And then you move pieces, and again, that ratchet thing, you move as far to the left or as far down as you want, but you can never go back. And you're picking up adventurers, you're picking up weapons, you're fighting fog monsters. But what makes the game interesting to me also is the fact that in the box there are three different games. that It all plays with the same basic mechanisms, but they score very differently, so you're going to play them differently. And then if you get the expansion, there's another four games that that adds, one of them being completely cooperative. It's just so much in there. There's so much, and I love this. I play this all the time. I teach new people, and it's such an easy game. It scales well, plays well with two, up to four. I just love this one a lot, and it's my favorite game from Michael Kiesling. So those are my 10 favorite games from Michael Kiesling. What are your favorites? Do you like him better solo? Do you like him with his combinations with Wolfgang Kramer or others? Let me know in the comments. But until then, I'm Tom Bass, and you've been watching my favorite games from my favorite designers.